So, you need to wear a suit for work, a job interview, a party, prom, a court date, because you forgot to pay your child support. You are the father! Or whatever the reason is. But you don't want to look like the H-E-B guy. You want to look like James Bond in a suit because nobody rocks a suit as well as James Bond. I mean, just look at this. Come on. Even I have a crush on him. He's my background screen on my iPhone. But if you want to look like him and buy that exact Tom Ford suit, guess how much it'll cost you? 4000 bucks. And that's not even including the shirt, shoes, tie, and everything else you need, so it's more like five grand. I don't know about you, but I don't have five grand casually sitting around waiting to be spent on a damn suit. But you can achieve the same effect by following a few simple rules about suit style. And I'm going to teach them to you right now. Number one, color. Most newbie suit wearers go straight for black suits. Wrong. Black suits are only appropriate for tuxedos, funerals, and low-level gangsters in martial arts movies. My three color recommendations for suits are navy, gray, and charcoal, not really dark gray. So, pick whichever of those you like and get it. There are definitely other colors that work, but it's best to stick to the basics until you're more experienced with your suits and you know what you like. Kind of like how you probably don't want to buy that Aston Martin until you actually know how to drive a car. Number two, lapels. Trust me. Size matters. If it's too small, she won't like it. If it's too big, she won't like it. And of course, I'm talking about the lapels on your suit. The lapel is the collar part of the suit that folds down. The skinnier the lapel looks, the less expensive and cheaper your suit looks. If you look at all of James Bond's suits, you can see that he has bigger lapels and that they make the suit look fuller and more proportionate. When you wear a suit, people will be looking at your neck and chest area because you'll most likely be wearing a tie. And if your lapel is too small or too big, it'll throw off the proportions of the suit. So this is not the place to try to be trendy. Which brings me to point number three. Don't wear skinny or fat ties. Skinny ties and fat ties will definitely throw off the proportions of your suit, since it'll either swallow up or expose way too much of your inside shirt, making your chest area look bigger, and it's like taking up more space than the actual suit jacket. Go for a tie that's a tad bit skinnier than normal ties, and if you're stuck, it's better to be on the skinnier side than the fatter side. Fat ties only look good with certain types of suits, and even I have trouble matching them with suit jackets, so unless you're Tom Ford himself and have a lifetime of experience figuring out how to customize your suits, I'd just stay away from fat ties. Number four, make sure your shirt sleeve is slightly longer than your jacket sleeve. I see so many guys screw this up, so if you're able to do this one simple thing, you'll instantly be ahead of 90% of the other guys who look like bozos in their suit. The jacket sleeve should fall right at your forearm bone, and your inside shirt should fall right after that, at the base of your hand and just an inch past your forearm bone. Any more than that and you'll be showing way too much sleeve, any less and you won't be showing enough. I'll have a bunch of examples on screen now so you can see exactly what I mean. Number 5. Fit the fit is by far the number one most important thing that determines whether you'll look good in your suit or not. You can buy a ridiculously expensive $5,000 designer suit, but if the fit is bad, you'll look bad. Now, James Bond doesn't go down to the store and buy a suit off the rack. The reason he looks so great is because he makes sure his suit, shirts, and pants are all well-fitted and not sloppy-looking and unprofessional. In terms of jacket and overall suit fit, the jacket should always hug your body like a clingy girl and not hang off of you. Shoulder seams should always be in line with your natural shoulder, not hanging over it, and there should never be more than an inch of room throughout the body. This will ensure that your suit stays fitted and looking proper as fuck. A suit is just a collection of individual pieces, and the fit of each piece is equally crucial. For example, Bond shirts fit perfectly beneath his suit jacket and they never come untucked, even when he's shooting bad guys, fucking bitches, and winning at poker. If you want to achieve the same effect, you need to be rocking shirt tail garters. The ones I wear are from our sponsor KK and J. Shirt tail garters are also referred to as shirt stays, and they have been worn for literally decades by badasses in the military as part of their dress uniforms. Bond suits always have a ton of attention to detail, including making sure his shirt is tucked in. So, if you're going to spend all this time getting into a nice fitting suit in the perfect color and the perfect accessories to match, then you might as well take an extra 30 seconds to optimize your shirt's fit with shirt stays. This way, you avoid that ugly muffin top that shirts get when they come untucked, and make sure your shirt is doing what it's supposed to, make you look leaner, taller, and more aesthetically pleasing. And that's why these shirt stays are essential. All you do is clip them to your socks and to the bottom of your shirt and boom, you've got a perfectly fitting shirt. 
It literally takes two seconds to look a lot more attractive than the other guys who have muffin tops, who need to shove their hands in their pants every five seconds to adjust their tuck. Tuck that. I mean, fuck that. Shirt stays also hold your socks up to make sure that they stay erect and going all day. Knowing your shirt is going to stay tucked in no matter what gives you that extra confidence boost. Because now you know you can go around driving Aston Martin, shooting bad guys, stealing the villain's girlfriend, and winning $100 million at poker, and your shirt will stay tucked the whole time. Because if you've ever crashed a wedding, went to a formal event, or went to a Sweet 16, you know damn well that the jacket always comes off. And when it does, if your shirt isn't tucked in and looking sharp, you're going to look ridiculous. If you want to take your shirt and suit game to the next level starting right now, I recommend checking out KK&J to make sure your shirts always stay tucked in and fitting godly. Now click the link in the description to check them out, and I also have a special code for you. They have a ton of different patterns, so you can still show off your style when a girl takes your pants off. And besides, when that moment comes, your shirt won't be the only thing that's standing straight up. <laughs> Last but not least, everyone forgets about pants. They should always sit around your natural waist helping you look tall and lean. You can achieve this with some badass suspenders to make you look like a super boss with your jacket off. KK&J has you covered there, too. Number 6. Avoid prom style. This is the style that a lot of younger guys go for, where they have this really stupid loud shirts and vests and ties with silly patterns and it looks just plain bad. Stick to subtle colors and patterns. Most prom-style suits also fit terribly and boxy and the shirts are equally bad, which is another reason why shirt tail garters are important in making sure your stuff fits dope and maturely. Not like some kid whose mom made him rock some shit from the children's place. Number 7. Match your leathers. This is a simple tip that I feel really ties everything together. If you're wearing brown shoes, wear a brown belt and a brown watch strap in the same or at least a similar brown leather. If your favorite watch has a black strap, then try to pick a belt and shoes in the same black leather. You can also match your medals. For example, if your watch has a silver face, get a belt with a silver buckle and some silver cufflinks. Doing this shows you pay attention to little details and you know what you're doing. Number 8. Don't match your tie and pocket square. This is another rookie mistake. Red ties plus a red pocket square. Blue ties plus a blue pocket square. Newbies think, hey, pocket squares are cool. I'll wear one and it should be the same color as my tie. Wrong. It should definitely not be exactly the same as your tie. That's prom style again. If James Bond is wearing a pocket square, it's always a white one. You can stick to white or you can branch out into other colors and designs, but the key point is to not be too matchy with it. I'll have some examples of mismatched pocket squares on screen now, so you can see how cool it looks. Number 9. Do a little at a time. This may be the most important tip on here aside from fit. It's easy to get excited and think, damn, suits are badass. I'm going to go out and buy three or four of them right now and a bunch of shirts and ties and a few new pairs of shoes and belts and even a new Aston Martin to match. Well, maybe not the last one, but look, calm down. I highly recommend just getting one quality suit first. Then you can wear it and try it with different shirts and ties and start to figure out what you like because everyone has a different style. You don't want to buy 10 new dress shirts only to realize you prefer wearing shirts with cufflinks and all the shirts you got don't support cufflinks, so take it easy. Go little by little and get yourself quality pieces that are high quality and that you actually like. And that's it. I hope these tips help you avoid that dorky guy wearing his first suit and tie look, and instead skyrocket your suit wearing ability to James Bond level and beyond. And be sure to check out KK&J by clicking the link in the description for the awesome discount.